This is Gene Bailey. If you're unfamiliar, he's a televangelist. He's on the TV show Flashpoint right now. It's on uh, Kenneth Copeland's, um, what do you call it? Like uh, Victory Channel is what it's called. And they propagandize about how great Donald Trump is like 24-7. Now, as it turns out, some televangelist named Drenda Cassie or Casse or something, I'd never heard of her, but she's on the Victory Channel too. She won, well, she's likely to win, almost guaranteed to win county commissioner for Knox County in Ohio. And she is a complete far-right nutcase. Like, her mind is just gone. So they got her on this program to talk, and um, it just got wild. Anyway, I just want to give this a listen, see what they have to say. And while we listen, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII. If you never played it, it shouldn't bother you too much. Just be in the background, um, just kind of running around doing whatever. So, all right, let's give this a listen. Gene, I decided to go John Fetterman this evening, so I put on my Flashpoint hoodie for everybody in the audience. But you're right. This is something that shouldn't... Is he saying John Fetterman because Fetterman wears hoodies? Are you saying you're trying to look like a normal human being? Um, okay. Great. Not have withstood the test of scrutiny or time. And I think it's very interesting the way this has all come about. Let's take a step back and remember what Letitia James did in the months prior to her even taking office. Okay, Letitia James is the one that charged Trump with a crime in the first place, famously. Uh, and she was the prosecutor in the case that that nailed him, basically, for um, committing the crime that he committed. And uh, yeah, I think she, I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm assuming she probably campaigned on the idea that she was going to nail this dude to the wall, that she was going to charge him with the crimes that he committed. That's my guess. But okay, what about Letitia James? Like, what does Letitia James and what she's done have to do with anything, by the way? Why do I care? We're talking about Donald Trump and what he did. What Letitia James, what Fannie Willis, what whoever else did is completely immaterial to what Trump did. I don't care. This is Trump attacking his political opponents. It's irrelevant. What Letitia James did in the months prior to her even taking office. I don't care. She said, I'm going to go into the office of attorney general every day, sue Donald Trump, and then go home. She stood out there and said, I don't even know if that's true, but who cares? I re it's like completely irrelevant. Did he commit the crime or not? The answer is yes, he did. She, he was an illegitimate president, so she was questioning the election. I wonder if the Democrats would jump all over her for that. She wasn't questioning by saying that he's illegitimate. Uh, did she even say that he's illegitimate? I mean, this sounds completely made up. Again, like these are propagandists. This is propaganda that we're watching. You need to doubt literally every word out of these people's mouths because they have a habit and a history of lying like that's what they do for a living they lie said that he was a bully a threat to democracy a racist gene if he no really did letitia james say such a thing that trump is a bully and a racist and a threat to democracy can you imagine somebody saying that about donald trump wow how messed up is that for somebody to point out that he's a bully, a racist, and a threat to democracy. I don't know if you guys knew this, but back in the, when was it, the 70s, the 80s, Donald Trump famously got, I think he got sued by the federal government, but by the attorney general of the state of New York, maybe? Somebody high up. The government sued Trump because he refused to rent to black people. After the civil rights movement and everything, Trump refused to rent to black people. Here you go. Uh, this is a New York Times article. No vacancies for blacks. How Donald Trump got his start and was first accused of bias. This is from 2016. She seemed like the model tenant, a 33-year-old nurse who was living at the YWCA in Harlem. She'd come to rent a one-bedroom at a still-unfinished Wilshire apartment in the Jamaica Estates neighborhood of Queens. If you don't know where all these places are... Um, So Manhattan is this strip. It's a, it's a little island, a strip here. 
and there are subway cars and bridges that go over into Queens. Queens is on Long Island. It's a big island that's like re- that stretches all the way out past Manhattan. So there's Manhattan that's an island, and then there's Long Island. And top left of Long Island is Queens. Bottom left is Brooklyn. And uh, Coney, Coney Island is just kind of the beach on the edge of Brooklyn. Um, Jamaica, Queens is the very end of the subway line, the very end of the F line onto Long Island. There are some good areas of it, some bad areas of it, of Queens. Some areas where millionaires and billionaires live. Um, Donald Trump, I believe, grew up in J- Jamaica, Queens, very obviously a, the good area of Jamaica, Queens. Funny enough, Stephen Hassan of, um, you know, the bite model, dude that wrote the bite model, he lived on the same block as Donald Trump when he was growing up. I think that's kind of interesting, but anyway. Uh, Jamaica, Queens, for reference, is also where 50 Cent was shot. 50 Cent got shot in Jamaica, Queens. Anyway, um, wow, this dude has one HP left. That's crazy. Anyways, this is saying that uh, this woman came from Harlem, which is in the northern part of Manhattan. Uh, At the time, it was probably a pretty rough area. She came from Harlem to rent a one-bedroom at Wilshire Apartments in Jamaica Estates in in Queens. So it was at the end of the F line. It was probably in a really nice area. She filled out what uh, what the rental agent remembers as a beautiful application. She did not even want to look at the unit. There was just one hitch. Maxine Brown was black. Stanley Leibowitz, the rental agent, talked to his boss, Fred C. Trump. Fred Trump was, I guess, Trump's dad. I asked him what to do, and he says, take the application, put it in a drawer, and leave it there. Mr. Leibowitz, now 88, recalled in an interview. It was late 1963, just months before President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Landmark Civil Rights Act. And the tall, mustachioed Fred Trump was approaching the apex of his building career. He was about to complete the jewel in his crown of his middle-class housing empire. Seven 23-story towers called Trump Village spread across nearly 40 acres in Coney Island. Again, Coney Island is like the beach um, along the base of Brooklyn. He was also grooming his heir, H-E-I-R. His son, Donald, 17, would soon enroll at Fordham University in the Bronx, living at his parents' home in Queens and spending much of his free time touring construction sites in his father's Cadillac, driven by a black chauffeur. Fordham University is uh, in the Bronx, and the Bronx is north of Manhattan. It's not on Long Island. The Bronx is just part of mainland United States. It's not, not an island. Uh, Long Island contains Queens and Brooklyn. Manhattan is its island, its own island. Staten Island is its own island. The Bronx is part of mainland U.S. And Fordham is pretty far north. But Donald wouldn't be taking the subway anyway. If he were taking the subway, it'd be like a three-hour commute. Oh, my God, that'd be a nightmare. Uh, From Jamaica, Queens, you'd have to take the F train all the way into Manhattan, take it to 42nd Street. No. Yeah, he'd have to take it to 42, the F train. And then he would take the S train probably from 42 to Grand Central. It's a shuttle between the two. And then he'd hit the 6 train. Um, Well, no, he'd probably hit the uh, 5 train because that's the express train. He'd hit 4 or 5 on the 456 line from Grand Central, go all the way up to the north. It's all the way up. Jamaica, uh, um, Fordham University is. He could also even, if he wanted, optionally stop at Grand Central and take um, the Metro North Railroad for like a dollar twenty-five or something, I think is what it costs now. But anyway, yeah, Trump didn't do any of that. You know what Trump did? He took a chauffeur, of course. This dude... God, I can't stand Donald Trump. Anyway, the point is that um, they didn't rent. So Fred Trump didn't rent to black people. 
through the 60s and then into the 70s when Donald Trump took over the empire when Fred was obviously gone or or even after he died. Donald Trump continued to not rent to black people and was sued for it in 1973. Affidavit of Donald Trump in 1973 about the housing bias case. In a 1973 court filing, Donald Trump denied allegations by the government that Trump management had engaged in racial bias in renting of apartments. The document was contained in the National Archives. Here's the document. Interesting. Justice Department undertook its own investigation and in 1973 sued Trump management for discriminating against blacks. Both Fred Trump, the company's chairman, and Donald Trump, its president, were named as defendants. It was front page news and for Donald amounted to his debut in the public eye. Absolutely ridiculous, he was quoted as saying as the government's, uh, I'm sorry, he was quoted as saying of the government's allegations. Looking back, Mr. Trump's response to the lawsuit can be seen as presaging his handling in, in subsequent challenges in business and politics. Anyway, the point is Donald Trump famously is racist. He is actually racist, really. Like It's not the kind of thing where... I'm going to switch back to where what we were doing. It's not the kind of thing where, well, you know, like he's done some things that maybe didn't help the black community before, but he's never admitted to it and he denies being a racist. No, he's racist. The dude's racist. He's always been racist. He intentionally set out to not rent to black people as the president of his company and got charged for it or sued by the attorney general or something like that. He got in all kinds of trouble. It was a big deal at the time. Front page news. Complete piece of garbage. Has been all the way since the 60s or the 70s. His dad taught him well to be a piece of garbage. Good job, Fred. Hope ho- hope you're happy with what you did. Turn your son into a piece of trash. Uh, let's keep listening here. So, This guy's complaining that people are calling Fred Trump. I'm sorry, that they are calling Donald Trump a racist. Well, he is a racist. He's always been a racist. Really? Is this the first you're hearing of it? Are you surprised by that? It's an illegitimate president. So she was questioning the election. I know. No, I don't believe that. I wonder if the Democrats would jump all over her for that. Said that he was a bully, a threat to democracy, a racist. Yes. Uh, I can't believe he's denying any of this. Of course. Yes. Really? Gene, if any prosecutor or if anyone who was suing us said any of those things about us, we would not have a fair shake at a trial. We would know we wouldn't have a fair shake at a trial. Uh, The prosecutor is not supposed to be your friend. We live in an adversarial system. Of course the prosecutor is going to be opposed to you. We need to talk, uh, I mean, you need an unbiased jury as much, or as unbiased as you can get. It's really, really hard to find an unbiased jury, maybe impossible. But the prosecutor, yeah, the prosecutor is going to be biased against you. Are you really surprised? You cannot convince me that this guy, um, political staffer for federal house members for who knows how long is really unaware of how our system of governance works. Is he really unaware? Can't be. And yet that's what she ran on. And then when she got into office, that's her single pursuit was just going after Trump and his family. And then the New York Times today puts out this headline after all of the or right before the judgment was reduced a little bit. They put out this saying Trump owes 454 million by Monday, which was now reduced to about 170 million or risks losing some properties. But experts say valuing the buildings would be a guessing game. No, I don't think it'd be a guessing. What expert? See, these are weasel words, but experts say, where is he reading this? Where did he hear any of this information? Like none of this sounds accurate or familiar at all. Like what's he even talking about right now? Don't forget the Central Park Five. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Thank you for reminding me. 
Famously, Donald Trump absolutely insisted that five people, uh, there were five black people, were uh, accused of murdering somebody, I think, in Central Park. They were called the Central Park Five. And uh, they were exonerated, like proven that it was not them and the real person was caught. But despite knowing that these people were innocent, completely innocent of all wrongdoing, Donald Trump put out a full page ad in a newspaper, uh, like on the front page saying the Central Park Five are getting away with it. And blah, 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 blah. After knowing that they were innocent, he did that shit. With little to no evidence, anyway, even if he didn't know. It's like the birtherism shit. Dude got all kinds of evidence that Obama lived in or was born in the United States. They said, Re release your birth certificate, release your birth certificate. So he released his birth certificate. The one that didn't include social security numbers because identity theft sucks. And they said, well, we want the one with the social security numbers, you know, the long form one. That was Donald Trump. Donald Trump did that. He's a racist piece of trash, always has been. Is anybody surprised by that? Really? Properties, but experts say valuing the buildings would be a guessing game. I don't know what experts he's talking about, truthfully. But let's just step back, see if we can get a little bit of context. Like, what, what's he even reading from right now? Office, that's her single pursuit was just... Oh, he's, he's talking about Letitia James, okay. ...going after Trump and his family. Well, her, her single pursuit as, I think she's the attorney general, her single pursuit should be charging people with crimes who commit crimes. So yeah, that should be, yes. Donald Trump, if he committed a crime should be her single pursuit. Absolutely. And then the New York Times today puts out this headline. After all of the, or right before the judgment was reduced a little bit, they put out this saying, Trump owes $454 million by Monday, which was now reduced to about $170 million. Okay, so he's reading allegedly from the New York Times. Is this even real, or is he just, like, making this up, too? I don't know. Or risks losing some properties. But experts say valuing the buildings would be a guessing game. What experts? Those, those are weasel words. Um, we should not trust anybody that uses weasel words without at least making it clear who they're talking about. Like, you should at least make it clear who's being referenced. It seems to me, um, at least at the beginning, if you're going to use weasel words, then it, at a bare minimum, like clarify afterward or beforehand. Hold on a second. This was the entire case that Letitia James brought in front of Donald Trump, saying that he overinflated his assets and that he stole from business associates. That's correct. He yes. He did do that. He overinflated it. He kept two sets of books, one for the government and one for business associates. Uh, overinflated his assets, so he was screwing his business associates, i.e. banks and other lenders and, and you know other people in general. He, he screwed them over by telling them that he's worth more than he actually was, and he screwed the federal government over by telling them he's worth less than he actually was. He had two sets of books, and that's explicitly illegal. It's against the law to do that. How is this? How is this guy defending this, really? And I cannot believe that I can't pause this. I thought for sure I'd be able to pause this. I just got a super chat, and I can't read it. By the way, guys, check out my book, owenmorgan.com slash book. Since I can't pause this, I want to read the super chat in a second. owenmorgan.com slash book. Um, it will be out this week. That's my current plan. I have the cover. I have the everythings. I'm just finishing up recording the audiobook. I intend to basically release everything at the exact same time, if at all possible. So please check out the book. I'd really appreciate it. Do me a lot of good. Help me out a lot. I'm kind of getting shafted by the algorithm right now. It helped me a lot if you guys checked out my book. So give it a look. 
owomorgan.com slash book. And I hope you like it. It's what Enron did. Yeah, that's a good point. Neverman is here. Thank you. That's what Enron did famously. If anyone remembers Enron, I was too young to remember Enron when it was happening, but I remember hearing about it at least and learning about it. And Enron basically screwed people over and they gambled and lost. Um, they, they committed crimes and those crimes had a chance of paying off for them. And they also had a chance of screwing over every person from here to Texas. And as it happened, what Enron did screwed over every person from here to Texas. And they had to close their doors because they got so screwed over by everything. Anyway, yeah, Trump basically did like barely broke even did he even break even i understand if he just put his money in the stock market and done nothing else with it but but put it there in the stock market he'd be worth more than he is today like he did worse with his money than just putting it in stocks would have done that's like an embarrassment but now the New York Times, the left wing fake news media is saying we don't even know how we would go about valuing his buildings because it is so subjective. Mm, I don't know what you're talking. It's so subject. Are you trying to tell me that you think that it's subjective what Trump's buildings are worth? No. I mean, that's a pretty objectively knowable number. Trump wants people to feel that it is subjective. It's not. Uh, buildings of similar sizes and, and areas and all that stuff are very easily judged. We can figure this out pretty easily. This is where Final Fantasy VII Intergrade, or remake, ended right here. This is where it stopped. And then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the remake, part two, starts basically right here not quite here but in a minute it'll, it it starts which shows the double standard here the media can say oh we don't even know how to value his buildings but if donald trump like i don't know what they're talking about uh, trump's buildings are totally possible to value what does it and no one that he interacts with in the business world loses any money or is upset none of the banks had any money taken from them all of them got repaid then it is totally horrible apparently well, that's the thing. Like, he still broke the law, first of all. Whether he paid his loans back is immaterial, first. And second, he did actually screw the banks out of money. He told them that he was worth way more than he was, so he'd get a lower interest rate. And upon getting a lower interest rate, it means he paid the banks less money than he would have otherwise. So the banks actually did lose money on the deal, on the agreement that they had. Trump claims that the banks are happy with him or whatever. I haven't heard anything about that. N not to my knowledge. As far as I've heard, the, the banks are not happy about being screwed over the way that they were. Anyway, um, no victim, no crime is an interesting um, tact to take suddenly. Uh, why don't you tell me, what's this guy's name? Why don't you tell me how you feel about the drug war there? Uh, what, what, is it Matt? I think his name is Matt or something. He looks like a Matt, right? Apparently, for him to go about conducting business in New York, so Letitia James felt so motivated to go after him that she sued him for all of this money. So it would never withstand scrutiny. It will never stand the test of the voters. And I believe that independent voters recognize this. And every poll that has come out since Donald Trump has been sued, indicted, or pursued by the left wing media shows that any time that he is attacked, he just goes up in the polls. That's inaccurate. Uh, that is absolutely not true attention that Trump is receiving from the media or whatever makes him go up in the polls from time to time. But to my knowledge right now, Biden is beating him. It's close either way, and it shouldn't be close. It's like mind blowing to me that it is close in the first place, that there's even a possibility that Donald Trump could maybe win. Either way, he's not going up in the polls every time he gets indicted of something. If you feel that way, then why are you bothering to complain about it? Like, why, why do you even care? Isn't it a good thing that Trump is being indicted on this or that or sued or whatever? Uh, so true, so true. All right, so if you want to understand uh, on Fox, Larry Kudlow uh, has a great video here I want to show you about how to understand this whole Trump coalition. Watch. 
Remember, Trump is building this phenomenal middle class working folks coalition. Okay, I don't know what this is. Larry Kudlow, I'm unfamiliar. But what I do know is that Fox News is propaganda. It is pure, unadulterated propaganda. So whatever you hear on this is almost certainly going to be a lie. And it should be distrusted by default. Of whites, of Latino, Hispanics. So, so Larry Kudlow, I guess, is saying Trump is building a coalition of all different types of people, okay? Of blacks. Take a look at the numbers. They're phenomenal. These are people who are losing money. Their real wages are going down. Uh, that's just, like, this is all inaccurate. Like, this is all just a lie. And also, wait, there are real metrics and statistics that we can look at to find answers to this question. I'm not so... I don't know that Donald Trump is actually doing the demographics that this dude's listing right now. But maybe. But again, this is propaganda. He's almost certainly lying about it. Prices are still high. 20% increase in the CPI, 20% increase in groceries, 30% increase in energy. Like, I, again, I don't know what he's talking about, but all, you know, the economy has fantastic metrics right now. By all uh, standard metrics, everything is really, really good in the economy. The way that traditionally, the way that the economy is traditionally measured, it's doing really well right now. Phenomenally well. Presidents get re-elected usually when the economy is in the state that it is right now. Almost every time incumbents will get re-elected for this kind of economy. I don't know, 70% of the country or something like that is like one $400 emergency away from like financial ruin. So there's that. But it, it's been like that for like decades at this point. That's... You know, it was that way under Trump. It, it was that way under Biden. It was that way under Obama, Bush, Clinton, H.W. Bush, Reagan. I mean, Reagan really started a lot of these problems. Um, it's been that way for a long, long, long time, and it's not Biden's doing. But by all standard traditional metrics, the economy is good. So all this stuff that Larry Kudlow is saying right now is just like a lie. 20% increase in groceries, 30% increase in energy. Their mortgage rates and mortgage costs, if they want to buy a home, over 7% on the... Interest rates are high right now in an attempt to bring inflation down. And I think they're lowering interest rates now. The Fed is. The Fed controls interest rates. The Federal Reserve. It's a private company that acts as like... Um, the money printers, and they loan money to the federal government. Anyway, they raised interest rates to try to uh, improve our situation, to try to lower, you know, tweak a number here or there, get the economy to do this thing or that thing, whatever. And it's worked so far. So yeah, maybe interest rates are high, but they are going down. You know, things are getting better right now. Mortgage rates and mortgage costs, if they want to buy a home, over 7% on the rate. It probably cost you another 12, 1500 bucks than it did a year ago, uh, three years ago. Uh, this is complicated. And he's, see, this is what propaganda does it takes something that's very complicated and it simplifies it incorrectly. It kind of turns it into something that it's not. And uh, gives it the, the least charitable interpretation. So anyway, um, this is just propaganda. Like, he's just propagandizing. This is all way more complicated or just straight up false. Like, sometimes these people aren't even propagandizing. They're, ju they're just lying. Sometimes they don't even bother um, twisting things around and making it seem different than it really is. Sometimes they just lie. Car purchases, you got to pay about 10% on that rate. Credit card purchases, you got to pay about 25% on that rate. So Is he saying that credit card interest has gone up to 25% on average? Is that what he's saying right now?
Yeah, like none of this makes any sense. I got my first credit card ever. It was it's it was three hundred dollars. I think they raised my credit limit recently. I gave it to my kid so that they can use it at, for her allowance. You know, she can use it as her allowance, and I just pay off the little bit that she spends every month, it's like a hundred bucks a month or something, and I, I pay that off every month. Um, and the credit rate hasn't gone up since I got the card. Like they don't raise the interest rate to 25%. That's not how it works. So I have no idea what this guy's even talking about. I don't even know what my, my credit card rate is, but credit cards are usually pretty high, aren't they? Mortgages are around 5% if you're lucky. And credit cards are around 15% if you're lucky. Is that right? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't pay for things that I, I don't believe that I should have to pay for. Kind of stick it to the man. And that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of hurt me in the past. Like, I don't believe that I should have to pay for, um, medical bills. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to pay for, me for medical bills. Guess who's not getting their payment. If I go to the ER because I am dying because a lung collapses, guess who's not getting paid? If I shouldn't have to pay for something, then I don't. Historically. Of course, I, I'm changing that now that I, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm, I'm trying to fix things and be a little bit more responsible with it and stuff. But historically, I've stuck it to the man and said, go f*** yourself if you want the money then take it from my cold, dead hands. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's a bad way to live. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do what I did. But the point is nobody will loan me anything as a result. So that's why I don't have any credit cards in my name. If mainstream media lies, why do these people show clips from them? Well, this is like, uh, this is Fox News. So these people will show the lies because they believe the lies. They agree with the lies. Uh, hellbound hillbilly mortgages tend to follow the fed credit cards tend to be high yeah that's what i thought credit card purchases you got to pay about 25 percent on that rate i have no idea what he's talking about that doesn't even make any sense so you have these economic oh. pressures you have these fears of law and order and you have pictures of literally an invasion of the united states by a lawless mob it is absolutely astounding and i do not think biden will lift one finger to change that i mean that's not happening pictures of a of an invasion by a lawless mob that's not happening what uh, let me go back to you, Drinda, as we're breaking down what he, Larry Kudlow was saying. Um, we're not seeing anything other than an embracing of the invasion at the border. Do you think we're going to see? Oh my God, it's all constantly invasion at the border, invasion at the border. Every single election, they, these people on this TV show and on this network, Kenneth Copeland and other televangelists, constantly talk about how there's an invasion at the border oh my god people are coming and they're gonna take your kids and they're gonna eat your babies Ugh, there's no invasion at the border people get over it and by the way it would be valuable to the united states to have immigrants come here seriously extremely valuable having more people giving money velocity spending renting, buying, purchasing, selling, creating businesses, whatever, that's valuable to an economy. It would increase our economy. These people just want to turn it into something that it's not. They're obsessed with it. See the uh, Democrat uh, ultra left uh, move off that position or are they going to continue to pull them in? I'm sorry, what, what was that? Breaking down what he, Larry Kudlow was saying. Um, we're not seeing anything other than an embracing of the invasion at the border. Do you think we're going to see the uh, Democrat? Nobody is embracing an invasion at the border because there's no invasion taking place, first of all. Second, it would be good to have more people coming into the, the United States. Third, there must be a humanitarian corridor open for refugees to enter the United States and make their way to a refugee center to request asylum status. 
by international law, there must be a humanitarian corridor available. And uh, instead of making that humanitarian corridor available, Flashpoint and other televangelists have nutcases standing on the border, taking video cameras and watching people who are from war-torn countries walking toward the refugee center and saying, you see this invasion? This is an invasion. They're invading. Oh, my God, it's China. They're coming in. They're getting us. Insane. Get help, people. Uh, ultra left uh, move off that position or are they going to continue to pull them in yeah we w apparently being ultra left i guess i want um an invasion of the united states i'm, I'm shooting for an invasion yeah totally I think they're going to continue to pull them in because that's their army that they're counting on. That's their voter army. We're seeing crazy things happening where people are given uh, information. They're given uh, identification opportunities. Even now in New York, a gun is OK for an illegal to have. So I. Oh, my God, dude. All right. First of all, that's your fault. If any. OK. Anything that a quote unquote illegal has or does is illegal by definition they're not allowed to be in the united states so they're not allowed to have a gun but you're you are complaining about people being allowed to have guns you of all people are complaining about this okay that's interesting and second this whole voter army thing do you know do you have any idea how long it takes for an immigrant to be eligible to vote in the United States, it's a minimum seven year process. Minimum. Most immigrants don't even care. They don't want to get involved in politics because they have no interest. And third, not all immigrants are going to vote Democrat. In fact, it's like, what, I think 55 45 split or something at best. This is just complete fabricated nonsense. But like they live in this fantasy land where they're the victims in every situation. It's nuts. I think they need the the uh, the people at the border, but they're trying to minimize it and say these people are the people that made America. Well, not illegal. No, I'm saying that it's fake. It's not happening. OK, we have a humanitarian corridor open for refugees, people who are suffering terribly at the hands of, you know, dictators and, and really, really bad people who have done absolutely terrible things to people in their country. We have a humanitarian corridor open for them to make it through. As we should. Otherwise, there's no, like, invasion or whatever. Other than people just coming through and applying for asylum status. That's it. Get help that are trying to destroy America. These were people that are invited and came through legally immigration, through legal immigration. These the folks that are coming now are they're not the best and the uh, most uh, vetted folks in in the world. This is you know what she's about to say. She's about to say they're not the best and the brightest. <laughs> My God, it's insane, dude. It's insane. It's just like what Donald Trump said forever ago. They're not sending their best. This is not the same as legal immigration. I think, though, they'll continue to push this agenda. It is their army. It, it is their army indeed. Let me go to you, uh, Pastor Hank, before we go to the break. Uh, you, you see this. How should we be responding to all of this? It's like I said earlier to, uh, to Luke. Uh, it, it seems like no matter what they do to President Trump, it, it is, he's not just Teflon. It's like it helps him. The more uh, that's false, but I love that they're calling him Teflon Don. Do you know who Teflon Don is? Some people may not. Teflon Don, also known as John Gotti, was one of the leaders of the five families in New York City. He's a he's a leader of the mob. In uh, he's born in the Bronx. He was the Don. I think he's part of the. Yeah, I, I think he's part of the Gambino crime family. Uh, yeah, I believe that he was uh, one of the, the Gambinos. In fact, he was the Gambino, and he ordered all kinds of hits on people and ran drugs and, you know, all kinds of stuff. He, he was bad. It was bad.
Teflon Don, nothing stuck to him. He found a way of preventing any crimes from sticking to him because he wouldn't ever come out and say, kill this person. I want this person dead. It, uh, some of this stuff happened at Ferrara's Bakery down there in Little Italy. In fact, Little Italy famously was like a place where everybody, all the five families agreed. No hits, no war, no nothing there unless the five families agree. Unless there's a hit on somebody for ratting out some part of the mob. No hits in Little Italy. And uh, anyway, the Don, the leader of the Gambino crime family, he was Teflon. He would sit in Ferrara's bakery and he'd nod his head, yes or no, for what he wanted his people to do. You know, they'd say, well, maybe we can take care of this guy. And um, Teflon Don would sit there and... No, not his head, yes or no, based on what he wanted them to do. He was Teflon. They could not get him. And they're literally calling Trump Teflon Don now. Like, could this be any more on the nose than it is? This is nuts. Trump, it, it is, he's not just Teflon. It's like it helps him. The more negative stuff they, they do yeah. to him, the more it helps him. What do you, what you think? Well, you have to look at in scripture when God gets involved with what he desires, especially if the people of God have prayed, he releases what's called an anointing of preservation and the enemy will try. He'll turn up the, uh, the furnace seven times hotter, but it causes the fourth man to appear. He will begin to. Okay. That's obviously a reference to the book of Daniel early, I think chapter two, maybe where Meshach, no, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put into a furnace as punishment, and they looked through the furnace uh, door and found a fourth person with them, and they opened the furnace door, and they were alive, and the fourth person was gone. Anyway, it was supposed to be an angel. Um, that's what he's talking about, I guess. But... It causes the fourth man to appear. He will begin to try different things towards those that God appoints, but it will backfire. And we're going to continue. Oh, wait, is he giving us a prophecy right now? You just see this backfire. God has been saying for three and a half years that I've been on Flashpoint. He's been saying, you're going to see boomerangs. You're going to see things flop, and then they're going to flip. Oh my God, dude, is this guy still talking about the flop flip prophecy? I love it. I love everything about it. The flop flip prophecy. You're going to see boomerangs. You're going to see things flop and then they're going to flip. You're going to see divine reversals. One of the things we've got to do. Oh, I love it, dude. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm writing this down. Uh, th this is going to be one of my things where I talk about this in more detail. I can't do it right now, but oh, it's so funny is keep our faith strong in God's word and in God himself and watch our words. Don't come into agreement with the words that are of negativity and that which is trying to be perpetrated to create an unbelief and a fear that empowers the devil. And I want to say this, getting back to the President Trump thing, if I may. I Dude, just one quick thing. I had no idea that, like, if you didn't have enough money to buy the Chocobo Lure, which I apparently don't, you need 2,000 gil. I have 1,100. You have to go all the way back to Calm to sell some stuff at the store there to have enough. You can't just... Well, I guess you could battle some creatures to make the money, but uh, it is a complete pain in the ass. You really can't just sell stuff to Choco Billy? Really? Okay, anyway, sorry. Where's the devil? And I want to say this, getting back to the President Trump thing, if I may. I sense very strongly that even though it may look like now he's got a lesser bond, it's really more of injustice that is taking place. But it's strategically, God is positioning. If you're unfamiliar with what, what he's talking about, his lower bond, I don't even know if this is true, but they're claiming on this show that Donald Trump 
um, the the judge basically agreed to allow Trump to have a uh, to put up a hundred million dollars right now while he appeals the the um you know while he appeals the ruling instead of the full amount of four hundred and fifty four million or whatever he's he is allowing him to only pay a hundred million I I don't have any reason to believe that I don't know if that's true I haven't looked that up. And I don't trust these people as far as I can throw them. So just be very, very skeptical of everything out of their mouths. Seriously. President Trump, for all of this to begin to fall, not him, but those that have risen up against him, and that boomerang is going to come back on them. And I think this Letitia James, she calls herself peekaboo. Well, there's an old... No, she does not call her... Are you kidding me? She calls herself peekaboo. Really? She calls herself peekaboo, you, you say? No, she doesn't. Donald Trump called her Letitia Peekaboo James. Do you know why he, he did that? I had no idea. I had to look this up. Apparently, um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to say it because some people may be unaware, and I feel I have to explain. Apparently, the word jig is a slur for a black person. I had no clue. It's the kind of slur that was used in the 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, around the time when Donald Trump was getting in hot water with the federal government for refusing to rent to black people and accusing, you know, the Central Park Five of committing murder when they did not, when they were completely exonerated from it around that time. Yeah, that's when the word was used primar primarily. So anyway, um, Donald Trump starts referring to Letitia James, who's black, as Letitia Peekaboo James. Letitia Peekaboo James. And, and everybody's like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, what? Why do you keep saying Letitia Peekaboo James? It's pretty obvious to pretty much anybody who's, um, you know, been involved in politics or been involved in like, or watched racism unfold between the 1950s and the 1980s. Pretty obvious what he's doing. He's very clearly just calling Letitia James a jig. This is insane. This is, this is. Just like straight up disgusting, honestly. I'm back on them. And I think this Letitia James, she calls herself peekaboo. Well, there's an old saying, peekaboo, you're it. And I feel God. <laughs> okay. Peekaboo, you're it? What? Is that a saying? Has anybody literally ever said that in, in the history of ever? What does that mean? Peekaboo, you're it? What? A bad, bad slur around here. Really? My mom as a teen didn't know what it meant. Friend tricked her to shout it, and she got chased in bricks. Around. I didn't know it was a bad slur. Um, I, I feel that contextually, I feel it's appropriate for me to say it here because I, I, I think that people need to know that it's a slur, and they need to know what it is and what it means. You know, so I, I feel justified in saying it. Um, uh, I think it's okay to say certain things contextually. Anyway, yeah, that's what you, that's what Trump is talking about. And it's bad. Like um, people get the shit beat out of them for saying something like that in some places, obviously. Anyway, God's finger is going to get on her and that judge because they're touching something that God has placed his hand on. And Trump represents we the people. And I have a feeling it's going to not only backfire, but it's going to boomerang back on them. And I think they would be very smart if they believe in God to get the heart right and do. Oh, my God. Ugh. All right. You know what? I keep killing this Jacobo. I'm going to restart the game because th this is frustrating the hell out of me. I saved right before. I got in that battle. I'm not going to waste any more money. I already wasted plenty of money on those stupid greens. Anyway, yeah, it, it's apparently a really bad slur. So don't say that. Don't say that slur. There's a thought going on. He misspelled the J word version and the spell check went to peak a boo. Yeah, I don't think Trump would intentionally ever overtly say the word, say something, say something that 
overtly, obviously racist, I think he would allude to it. That's his style. He would say peekaboo instead. That's he. That's how Trump operates. That's how he's always operated. So honestly, I believe that uh, peekaboo is what he intended to say. But everybody knows what he really meant. Do what's right and not make it about smear politics and uh, election interference. Trump yeah. is going to be vindicated. Dude, I can't even believe that they said that this dude said that she calls herself peekaboo. That is that is nuts, dude. I believe it. I believe he will. All right, Drenda, we're going to say goodbye. I know it's in the, you know, going on 2 a.m. Yeah. where you are. Thank you for joining us tonight. Congratulations on everything. We'll see you I when you get back. I want to just echo, Jane, what I just said, Isaiah 10. Woe to those who enact evil statutes and to those who constantly record unjust decisions so as to deprive the needy of justice and rob the poor of my people of their rights. Dude, is she reading a Bible verse right now? Like, what the... Dude, I'm. This is really frustrating. This whole Jacobo thing. Trying to get this Jacobo. Okay, so she's reading the Bible. Great. Thank you for reading the Bible to me. Or unjust decisions, so as to deprive the needy of justice and rob the poor of my people of their rights, so that uh, widows may be their spoil and that they may plunder the children. Now, what will you do in the day of punishment and the devastation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee and where will you leave your wealth? And I. So I guess she's threatening people, saying that if you don't, like, do what she wants, then God is going to smite you or something? Just believe that word God gave me through the whole campaign. That is, I agree with what Hank just said. That is yeah. where we are. God is bringing judgment and opening eyes. So thank you for having me tonight. Thank and I you. think we just stand, we stand in faith. We walk right. in faith no matter what. See, even since I've won, there's been warfare against me, but we win. We prevail. Totally. Ever since I've won, there's been warfare against me. I bet. Yes. She's such, she is so persecuted, right? Man, she just can't catch a break. This filthy rich televangelist famously on TV, on Kenneth Copeland's network for God, who knows how long just one uh, seat in public office, and she's so persecuted. Ugh. Prevail, and God's word prevails in this nation. Amen, and I think we should have a return of Brenda, Drenda, and Terry at the Big Tent in Ohio. I think you're Amen. a fan favorite. Uh, thank you for being there. All right, so let me go to a shot of Luke Ball, because if you are looking at Luke and you're going, man, what a sharp sweatshirt, you can get those. Okay, now they're just trying to shout out all their junk. So, yeah, that's Flashpoint. Tell me what you think about these people. And tell me what you think about Drenda Cassie, I think is her name, the woman on the right here, and her her smile. Tell me what you think of her smile. And tell me what you think of her intelligence. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. Facebook just makes people think I'm smart. Uh, thank you, Greg. I appreciate your input on the subject. Tell me what you think about the whole thing in the comments. I want to know.